You know, there's really nothing to explain, Skip. In the end, they have a formula that they believe in. And they believe in, okay, the moment that we get a high-priced guy who's an all-pro or whatever you want to call it, we don't want a bunch of those because we can draft well, we can develop well. If you go back and you think about prior to uh, uh, Darius Sneed, who they take, took in the fourth round, they traded for a guy in Traverius Ward from the mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys in 2018 who was undrafted yep. and was traded to them in August. So they say to themselves, we can keep doing this. Now, all of a sudden, Sneed comes up, but then they draft a McDuff forecasting that Sneed is going to play well enough that he's going to need a big-time deal. We'll move on from him, and we'll slide McDuff into our top defensive McDuffie, back category. Yeah. McDuffie mm -hmm. into our top defensive back category. Mm. They just That's just how they do things. It reminds me so much of the New England Patriots. It just really does. The quarterback is a constant state, the head coach. The tight end and Kelsey, much like Gronkowski. Yep. And there's always one defensive player, like a Teddy Bruschi, that still is there from the original regime, like a Chris Jones. They take care I mean, of that. But Chris Jones, I love Teddy. Uh, no, no, I understand. He's, he's way I understand up here, not, yeah. But I'm just talking about the, a player, a body, yeah. not necessarily mm -hmm. accolades. Yeah. But I'm just saying a body where on the defensive side, there's always like one guy that they would keep. And they would say, okay, he's our guy. We're going to keep him and we just gonna keep rotating with everybody else and getting rid of them and keep our salary cap a certain way, and we're gonna penny pinch with everybody else except two or three guys on our entire roster. And that's what the New England Patriots did for years, and they won a lot of Super Bowls. Here's what this recipe is for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. It looks like they're gonna keep winning Super Bowls by doing it, because they have a certain philosophy and style that they see defensively that their secondary guys can fit in. We don't know what they feel about some of the guys on the back end that backs up other guys. Now, mind you, that secondary is extremely young. And they, there's a young secondary. This is not an old secondary. There's a lot of young guys. So they feel great about the prospects of these dudes turning into something special. Yeah. You say, well, why only a third-round pick if, if Sneed is such a, a, a shutdown corner? Because at the end of the day, you're not going to pay him. And everybody knows you don't want to pay him because you just paid Chris Jones. You're going to have to address Kelsey and some other players along the way. And you've already said, hey, we open for business. So if I'm open for business and the Tennessee Titans have got to pay him as well. They do. This, is hap this happens all the time when trades get out and guys ask for trades. They never get the true value. If you just keep it close to your vest and then all of a sudden you look up and a guy's traded, you go, oh, my God, mm -hmm. they gave up this, 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 and this. No one ever knew that Jalen Ramsey was actually going to be traded. All he said is, I want my money, I want my money, I want my money, I want my money. And then Tom Coughlin said, no, we're not going to pay you. The Rams said, we'd rather give you a, everything you want, the kitchen sink. You, you see what I'm saying? If he was sitting out there demanding a trade and I'm out of here, the Rams wouldn't have given him that. The Rams yeah. would have just gave him a nickel and said, keep it moving. And this is what happens with players and teams and organizations when they get leaks out there about trading players. Yeah. But they had no other choice because they franchise tagged him. They weren't going to let him walk for nothing, but they had already made a decision. We're going to keep Chris Jones. Now, if he would have signed a franchise tag and played on that franchise tag, he, he they would have kept him. He's the non-exclusive. Oh, the non-exclusive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would have kept him, for sure. It's just hard to believe a player that played at such a high level last year only merited a third-round pick. It just seems like somebody would say, I need that, I want that, at least a two. At least a two, if not a one. If you told me that you got a one for Legereus Sneed, I'd say, good good for you, that, that works. Yeah, but that one plus that, I don't know what he's going to get, $90 million no, or whatever it's going to yeah. be, that's a big number. Yeah. All right, he's 27 years old. He's young. He was originally a fourth-round pick, to your point, out of Louisiana Tech and he's played four seasons. So he should be entering his prime as a corner. And, and I'll never forget the first thing Jimmy Johnson told me when I met him in 1989 was, he's a defensive coach, as you know, you win with the guy who can rush the passer and the guy who can cover the, the pass, you know, with the, your defensive end and your, your cornerback. You have to have them or you, you can't play defense. Well, he, he played cornerback at such a high level because he competes so hard. And he's one of the best trash talkers in a good way because he'd get into everybody's face and let them know, not today, not here, not now. And that play that he made 
on Zay Flowers at the goal line, it just changed the game. If we, I think we're- A little punch out. I think Lamar's gonna pull that game out. But no, they went the other way with it. And, and somehow Baltimore could never get back in position to, to, to close the gap anymore. That was it, that was the play. And it was made by that cornerback, and he made plays for them all year long. Oh, good things happen yeah. to certain guys like yeah, that. That's true. You know, they, they just do yeah. things that you don't expect. Interceptions fall in their hands. They punch out fumbles. All of those sort of things. Now, maybe Kansas City is betting wrong on this. Maybe they're betting right, though, because they see their corners. They, they understand their defense more than we do. Okay? We look at it, we go... Oh, my God, he got an interception again. We'll yeah. take that all day long. No, oh, my I, God, I he punched out the ball. Yeah. But when they're looking at it, they're sitting there saying, well, first of all, he's in the wrong position. Uh, he's not doing this right. That's how they, that's how they look I at understand. stuff. You're and right. they make these decisions yeah. on guys saying we can get somebody at a cheaper rate to do the same thing as Snead. That's, that's, what, that's how they... Because if you think about it, Javarius Ward was Snead before Snead became... So that's how well, they start to point. say anybody... We plug in to this position is going to benefit from playing in our scheme and our defense. And they could be wrong, though. But then again, on the flip side, they could be right. They could be. So there were reports that Snead had a knee issue at the end of the year, but didn't seem to impact him in the Super Bowl at all. And because of him and because of Chris Jones, by the end of the year, I think you would agree their defense was way underrated because it was playing hellacious good football. Well, defense, and I, I think by the Super Bowl, they were right there with San Francisco's yeah, their defense, defense. Their defense was solid all season long. And then they peaked to a point they where peaked. they started playing really, really good. They did. And then in the postseason, they started to play better. Boy, they just took off. And he was such a lightning rod for them that now I look at their depth chart. I, I don't know these kids. Maybe you've They're all them. young, though. Yeah. Josh Williams, excuse me, Joshua Williams is... He'll enter his third year. He was a fourth-round pick out of Fayetteville State mm -hmm. in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And then Jalen Watson is a former seventh-round pick, also entering his third year out of Ventura College up in the state of Washington. Well, these are, you know, diamonds in the rough. They better be. You know, somebody better be able to play they, where they, they just know. They play well. Those young dudes play well for them last year. Yeah. So I think they have the confidence and they feel that they can duplicate some of the same success with them instead of Snead in the lineup. Yeah. So to your point, it's the Dallas Cowboys syndrome. So you say, okay, we're going to pay the quarterback, even though he keeps giving you some hometown discounts because, well, he did. He he took far really, less. It's than, not really a hometown okay. discount, but I get it. It, it, it. It's better than you think it is because he did space it out pretty good yeah. for them. Oh, you yeah. Know? No, he spaced it out, but yeah. that doesn't mean the Cowboys can't space it out. No, but Dak didn't space it out last time, and they're still paying the piper on that one. You know that I one, wouldn't have spaced yeah. it out either. Okay, so they pay in Kansas City. They pay the quarterback, and they pay the tight end, as you said, and now they have paid the defensive tackle. Or if you if you it. think about a couple yeah. years ago, they traded for the left tackle from Baltimore. Yep, uh, Brown, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, he was a free agent. They just basically said bye bye. We'll yeah. we'll replace that spot because we're not going to give you the type of money that it would take to, to bring you back. They just said bye-bye. So they have this same New England Patriot sort of philosophy of guys when it's, when it's time to get paid, they only going to pay one, two, three, four guys, and the rest of you, y'all off on your own. Yeah. They let Tyreek Hill walk. They did. They that, traded that him better huge. yet. They yeah. traded him, not let him walk. They did. But Tyreek said, hey, man, I got to be the highest paid dude in the business. Yeah. They said, no, nah, never mind. We'll get it done another way. That's just their, it sounds like that that's their, their mindset and their philosophy on how Mr. Hunt wants to do things. Okay. It's funny you call him Mr. Hunt. Or I knew Clark Hunt like, or like whatever. eight years old. Yeah. Clark. He's Clark yeah. to me. But the point is, with the luxurious, look, Tyreek's a great example. I thought they would struggle without him, and clearly they pulled it off. They, they won a Super Bowl. They won two. Two Super But I mean, they won the Super Bowl immediately they did. the next year. They did. Give you that. And it's in large part because of the quarterback and because of his tight end. Yeah. Okay. So now I look at you've lost the spark plug of your defense. I just think you miss if it. You, if you see, you go back to you looking at it, though, Skip, you say it, it just uh, seems like a spark plug of the defense. When Chris Jones didn't play, they still lost. Oh, they did. <laughs> so no, they did. they're looking at it and saying, well, 
that's really the reason we lost is the beef up front. Yeah. Our back end is only successful because <laughs> our beef up front is yeah. applying the pressure. They don't have to hold on for four seconds to dear life. This is how they think and they process this information yeah, when they're sitting at the round table yeah. in their conference room trying to make these decisions. And by the way, that beef up front, just that guy, he made two plays in the Super Bowl that changed the Super Bowl on Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. He just did because he is that dude. So I, I get it, but man, did Tennessee benefit from, wait, you, you got an all pro, a first team all pro corner for a third round pick, take that. They made a lot of nice little quiet moves in Tennessee. They're starting to look like they're turning back into a decent Pollard. Team. Yeah. Uh, not Jared Judy, but mm -hmm. Kelvin Ridley. Yeah, Calvin Ridley. Those two right there. They got Hopkins still. Yeah. yeah. They got the kid that they drafted. Uh, now on defensive side of the ball, they pick up Sneak. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it might be something. Yeah. Will Levis, I guess, will be the quarterback. Yeah. Not a big fan, but he will be the quarterback, and they're trying to build around him and make his life as easy as they possibly they can. They took a plunge on him and... <laughs> <laughs> took a plunge, yeah. They, they didn't take a plunge on Derrick Henry, though, so here we go. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.